so good for you to be with us tonight. I want you to stand, sit however you may feel. We're going to open up with a little Christmas spirit here. And a three. Celebration of them all. Well, come on, ring those bells like the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, and He's more for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birth. Well, come on, ring those bells like the Christmas tree. Because of something good, celebrations we love to recall. Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem, the greatest celebration of them all. Well, come on, ring those bells like the Christmas tree. Christmas cheer there.
like the new look on the platform. You like that? You approve of that? I think it's beautiful, don't you? Gives us a little color, and that's all to be thankful for. With uh, We need to thank Melanie for that, Brother Wayne for that, and Brother Mark for that. They put a lot, a lot of work into this. I know when you turn around and you say, well, you know, that don't look like maybe that much work would go into it. But believe you me, it required a lot. So if you get a chance, thank them and tell them what a good job they have done. Who did I say help? Wayne, Melanie, and Mark. <laughs> okay. Randy's already thanking Mark back there. He's close to him. So thank you. Thank all of you. We want to thank you for your tithes and offering your gift tonight. God bless you. And it's Christmas season. Merry Christmas to you. Show me your way. Just turn around and wave at somebody say hello. And give me your full lighting down here if you can, please. It might be all we got. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like that. You read it, make a few notes or something, and it's just easier to see when you got a little lighting. Lois had to make sure it was straight now. And that's the way she makes me walk. <laughs> straight. <laughs> I'm glad I got somebody to keep me straight. And she's done a pretty good job, I think. You know, we're going to continue. We're going to continue with our lesson tonight. And it's about faith. And I love to talk about faith. And I don't know why everybody don't come and get in on these lessons because this will make about the eighth or ninth lesson I taught on it. And I don't just say that, but the message itself, what's in the message, could absolutely revolutionize people's life. If they just understood and grasped and got a hold of it, they would never be the same. Even though they're a Christian, you would never, never be the same once you get a revelation of the Word of God concerning faith because I know what it did for my life. It totally turned my life around. So I love to talk about faith. Anybody like to hear about faith? Amen. You can't hear too much about faith. Uh, I heard one preacher say just recently, he said uh, one of his fellow ministers told him, he said, uh, I'm not going to preach faith no more. He said, you're not? He said, no. He said, Why? He said, well, that stuff don't work. He said, what do you mean it don't work? He said, well, I thought it was going to get me a lot of stuff. <laughs> How many of you know that's not what faith is about, to get you stuff? Now, if it's used in the proper way, you can prosper. In many ways, prosperity, not just financially, but in many ways. But you will prosper financially if you understand. But if you think you're just going to get into it to get stuff, you done missed the mark a mile. That's really not what faith is about. Faith is a lifestyle, Amen. and it teaches us how to walk in this life and be world overcomers. 
And if you learn the concepts of faith and you study faith and you get it on the inside of you, it will absolutely change your life. Now, at the beginning of this series, you remember, I said, ask yourself three questions. What do you know? What do you believe? And what are you going to do? 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says we're going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing our labor is not in vain. We're going to endure hardship as a good soldier. We're going to be proactive. We're going to hold fast our confession of faith. We are world overcomers. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. He says he always causes us to triumph. Now the faith fight is a conflict between two kingdoms. Colossians 1.12 says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son of love. So we've been translated from one kingdom to another kingdom. Two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of the enemy, the kingdom of the devil, and the kingdom of God. Now, there are five species of homo sapiens on this earth, red, yellow, black, white, and brown, right? And regardless of what color or nationality, it makes no difference. You are either in the kingdom of darkness or you're in the kingdom of light or God's dear son of love. The kingdom of darkness is ruled by who? Satan. Satan. And the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light and it is ruled by God. Ephesians chapter 1 says, He has made the supreme universal Christ was the head of the church. Only two kingdoms. Jesus said, to the religious folks. He said, your father is the devil. That's good preaching, wasn't it? <laughs> he said, your father is the devil because you're of the kingdom of darkness. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In me is no darkness at all. Now, I love that. He did not just say, in me is no darkness. He said, in me there's no darkness at all, not even a smidgen. In me is no darkness at all. And so Jesus said in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. So if you're in the kingdom of God's dear son of love, then you're not in the kingdom of this world. Do you know why we have wars, what causes war? War happens when one person or a group seeks to defend a position. That's what causes war. Now, I said the fight of faith is a conflict between two kingdoms. What started this war between the two kingdoms was Lucifer said, I will ascend to the throne. He wanted to be like God. He thought he could take over the throne. He said, I, I'll take God's position. And God said, no, you won't, buddy. And the Bible says that Lucifer was kicked out of heaven and one-third of the angelic host followed him. And from that position, there's been two kingdoms and there's been war ever since. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God said, he said this to Satan. And see, Satan was operating through the serpent, Eve. And then Eve, you know the story, she got to Adam. But God said to Satan, I will put war or enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He was prophesying here about Jesus, that Jesus would come and destroy the works of the devil. Isn't it good to know that Jesus said to us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He came to destroy the works of the devil. When we think of the word destroy, many times we think of the word uh, annihilated. 
But it's not talking about annihilated because Satan hadn't been done away with. How many of you know he is well and he is alive? But to destroy the works of the devil. And that word there, destroy, is come from the Greek word luo, L-U-O. And it means, it means to loose, to undo. What Jesus was saying, that he came to undo the works that the devil had put upon man. He can undo that sickness. He can loose you from that infirmity. Jesus came to undo the works of the devil. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. The Bible said he spoiled powers and principalities and made a show of them openly. And so he brought Satan down. And so now he is the universal head of of the body of Christ and we are the body of Christ and we're in a conflict and we are in a war. Jesus said, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against powers, principalities, rulers of darkness, wicked spirit in high places. So you know, we think our fight sometimes is with our neighbor or with somebody we work with and we're in a conflict but really you're not wrestling against them. There's an unseen force out here that you can't go and grab by, by your hand like that. But it's always working, and it's always trying to get you out of the Word of God, get you away from the things of God, and get you away from what God wants to do in your life so that He can penetrate your life and bring havoc. But if you stand on that Word, it is a fight. You're going to have to fight. Don't think you're in this thing and you're going to sit back and it's a bed of ease. But it is a fight. But if you'll fight with your faith, you can win the conflict every single time. Isn't that good news? Jesus said the gates of hell <laughs> will not prevail against the church. So you see you're in a conflict with two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. But see, Jesus Christ is the captain of our salvation and he's already whipped the devil. And so, but you're going to have to engage in this fight but Satan is defeated. You can enter this fight knowing that Satan is defeated, but you're going to have to defend from your position. You're going to have to enforce the defeat upon Satan. I, I, everybody say, I'm in a war. So we have to understand that this is a good fight of faith. And the Bible says, what? That we walk by faith and not by sight. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I think that would be an important subject, don't you? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says three times, the just shall live by faith. And Habakkuk says that the just shall live by his faith. So you have to get your victory with your faith. And see, you, you, don't, you don't fight Satan for a position of victory, but we defend from our position of victory because we already got the victory. <laughs> Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, go. And he said, and you're the heal the sick and you're the cast out devils. So we are defending or fighting from our position of victory. And see, we are the heal. But Satan trying to come along and make you sick. He's trying to take your healing away. And you got to fight from that position. you got to fight from the position, I'm healed. I know I'm healed. How do I know I'm healed? Because I feel healed. I look healed. Because I go to the doctor and the doctor says, uh, you got a good report? Is that how I know I'm healed? No, 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 no. We know we're healed because the word says so. The doctor may not give me a good report. I may not look well. I may look like I'm not doing too well. But according to the Bible, I am healed and my faith fights from that position. And if I'll stay in that position and fight with my faith, we will win every single time, not some of the time, not most of the time. We can win every time. Everybody shout every time. Shout, I'm a winner. <laughs> Thank God we are winners in Christ Jesus. Amen. Psalms 16 says that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has been given to the children of men. This earth belongs to us now. 
See, Adam, this earth belonged to him. God told him to have dominion. And here comes the devil along and tricks Eve, and then she tricked him, and so he took his position of victory and dominion and put it into the hands of the devil. But Jesus didn't leave us there, hopeless and whipped and defeated. Jesus came, went to the cross, took back the position that Adam had, and now he's given it unto us and said, you rule this earth, you reign this earth, and you take dominion. That means you got to take dominion over sickness. <laughs> See, Adam was the God of this world, but through Jesus Christ, every believer has now become what Adam was. We are given the authority to rule on this earth, but we are in a conflict, and you have to take on that dude called the devil. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. A lot of folks walk around, you know, you better not say certain things, Brother Ken. If I had him tell me, he said, the devil might hear you, like they're afraid of the devil. I say, I, I say, Brother Mitch, I say, I want the devil to hear me. I want to hear me saying what God said. The only thing that makes the devil nervous is when you speak the word. When you begin to talk the devil's language, you know, poor, broke, sick, defeated, I won't ever have nothing, won't ever amount to anything, won't ever, won't ever be anything. As long as you talk that, the devil's got you right where he wants you. But when you take your stand in Christ and you take your position on the word of God and you begin to speak the word of God, Satan has to bow his knee. How did Jesus fight against the devil? He said, it is written. It is written, it is written, it is written, and the devil leaveth him for a season. How many of you know you can chase the devil off, but he's going to come back? But you know, you got to have stickability. You got to have fighting faith, a faith that's willing to stand, endure hardness as a good soldier. We may go through some bumps, we may go through some turbulent waters through some turbulent air, whatever. But I'm here to tell you, if we'll stand on that word, he'll speak calm to our life and there'll be calm and there'll be peace and he'll bring, he'll bring healing and he'll bring deliverance because God honors his word. It is written. But wait a minute, there's a, there's a problem here. You can't say it is written if you don't know it and you don't read it. You grab a little old promise out of the promise box and you read it before you go off to work. And don't think no more about it the rest of the day. Don't pick this Bible up. And then when trouble comes, you're the first one to say, I, I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why the Lord don't help me. I've asked him to. Well, you just can't put a little promise out. You got to get this word on the inside of you. You got to get it on deep on the inside of you. I mean, it. You got to feed your spirit with the Word of God. I said you got to feed your spirit with the Word of God. We feed our bodies, and we do it for strength. We do it for a number of reasons, but we feed our body. And you know what? You got to feed your spirit. What physical food is to your body? The Word of God is to your spirit. You have to take that word and you got to put it on the inside of you so that when Satan comes around and tries to put something on you, you say, thus saith the Lord. And Satan, he'll run at the word of God because that's the only thing he really fears is the word of God. So we have to fight from our position of victory. We're not fighting to get the victory. How many of you got the victory tonight? How many of you acted like you had victory all day long? You got to act like it. Faith is an act. When I don't feel good, I come on out and do what I'm supposed to do. Somebody says, well, you're just putting on an act. Exactly. I'm putting on an act. I'm letting the devil know, praise God, that no matter what he comes in my life, I'm going to act on the word of God. If the word of God says I'm healed, I'm healed. A well man gets out of the bed, goes to work, 
Have you ever been to work when you didn't feel good? Absolutely. But did you take the, the word of God and stand your ground? And most of the time, it don't take that long to get rid of the devil. You'll start feeling better. Just start speaking the word of God. And the, the, the word of God energizes you. I get energy from the word of God. The, the, the Amplified said it is energizes you. It infuses you. We're infused with the very power of God. The very anointing of God lives on the inside of us. And listen, we should be operating in that anointing. That anointing destroys the yoke. It'll break the yoke. It'll set the captive free. It opens blind eyes. It makes the deaf to hear. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for his word. Lift your hands and thank him for the word right now. Aren't you glad that you go to a church where you can hear the word? You don't hear no book report. You know, comic, comic report. You know, what's some of the comics today? I know back when I was going to Superman. Well, we're supermen. We're supermen and women when we have the anointing residing on the inside of us. Glory to God. But this is not just a fairy tale. This is not a make-believe story. This stuff I'm telling you tonight is real. So let's look at some of the things that we are. Now we need to understand three things if we're going to operate and function in this world. There's three ways we have to do it. Number one, as ambassadors. We are to function as an ambassador to the world. God told Adam, says, you have dominion over everything in this earth. In fact, look at, uh, look at Genesis chapter 1, the book of beginning. And let's look at verse, begin with verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Charles Caps used to say that God's given you authority even over creeps. <laughs> I kind of like that. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created to he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now Galatians 3.13 says we are redeemed from the curse of the law. And then Galatians 3.29 says if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, we are ambassadors for Christ. That means we are a representative. So we are representing a kingdom, the kingdom of God's dear son. We're operating and representing that kingdom of light. And Jesus said, let our light shine so that other men can see your good works. But who gets the glory? and glorify your Father which is in heaven. But we're to let our light shine. We're ambassadors. We are representing Jesus Christ. And we're in this kingdom of God. And from this kingdom, from this position, there's victory, there's healing, there's prosperity, there's blessing, there's peace of mind. Do you know how many people don't have any peace of mind in our they lay down at night and they cannot sleep. They wring their hands. They stare at the ceiling. They walk the floor tormented. Tormented by demon powers. You know, when I didn't know my authority in Christ, Satan used to take advantage of, of me in a lot of these things. I was just a brand new Christian. And so he would come and he would try to torment me. And he'd say things to me that now... I hear the same thing he says to me now, and I just flick it off like it's a fly. 
just brush it off. But back there, he said, you're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your house. You've got a mortgage on it. You're going to lose your car. They're going to repossess it. What are you going to do without a job? How are you going to take care of your wife? How are you going to take care of your family? See, all of those things would just bear on my mind. And then you look at the economy, and then they tell how many millions of people without a job. And then they tell about this one being laid off and that one being laid off and this one hours cut back and all of that. And see, me not knowing the word of God, see, I fell right into that trap. But I'm telling you, when I made a decision to get in this word and find out what belonged to me, things begin to change. Praise God, he brought me out of sickness. He brought me out of poverty. He brought me out of torment, mental torment and anguish. And praise God, he gave me blessings, poured his blessings upon me and gave me his peace. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, but my peace I give unto you. You got the peace of God. Do you think Jesus is at peace tonight? How many of you think he's nervous in heaven? How many of you think he's taking tranquilizers and not trying to go to sleep? And I'm not against you if you have to take a tranquilizer, okay? But I'm saying, God, do you think he's on tranquilizer? Do you think he's on any of that nerve medicine? What, what's, what's some of the nerve medicine? <laughs> what is this? I heard of one, Zamrax, something. What, what, what's the name? Huh? Zoloft. What's another one? Prozac. What's the know? Oh, I know one. I know one. I heard Xanax. Is that right? All that. Well, you know, I'm not against that people need it. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying relative to God, he's not nervous about anything. He's not upset about anything. And we got his spirit that lives on the inside of us. And Jesus said, my peace, not the peace that the world tries to give you. People try to find a little peace sometimes. You know, I see it all the time. People trying to find it in a whiskey bottle. They're trying to find it in drugs. They try to find peace on a, on a psychiatrist's couch. But you know, real peace comes from God. Real peace comes from the word of God. He can calm the storm in your life. And when you leave here tonight, you ought to leave just as relaxed, just as calm, because you know that God's going to take care of you. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Has God, has he always taken care of you? How long have you been on this earth, Brother Wayne? 64 years. Has God always taken care of you? Every day. But you had to fight some battles of faith, didn't you? You did. I remember when you lived over there on Indian Trail. I remember when he worked for Sears and Sears had this big layoff and he was one and you couldn't find a job back there then. But Brother Wayne was determined, I'm not going, I'm not going to get on welfare and I'm not against anybody on welfare now. Don't give me that. But he decided, I'm not going to get on welfare. And you know what he would do? Man had a good job, good paying job, but he would go and pick up bottles and cans and whatever it is to make a few bucks until something else opened. And then, to make a long story short, over the years, look how God had blessed him. Blessed him with a good family. Blessed him with a, a good home. Good transportation to drive. Got money in his pocket, I dare to say. You ain't broke, are you? Say, I'll never be broke again. I used to like what Leroy Thompson said. He said, I'll never be broke another day of my life. That's what I say. I'll never be broke another day of my life. I was always broke. I was always sick. I was always defeated. But when I got to hold this word, and I got to putting that word on the inside of me and got to acting on it. That's what I was talking about, acting on it. You got to act like it's so. Faith is always an act. Jesus told, the, told the, the ten lepers, he said, go show yourself to the priest. 
to, you know, to be declared healed so you could get back in society because they were not supposed to be out in society. You know, they were quarantined. Come on. They were quarantined. And you know what? Jesus healed them and he said, go show yourself to the priest. And when Jesus declared they were, go show yourself to the priest, they were healed. The Bible says, as they went. See, they didn't, they, didn't, they, they didn't receive healing, the manifestation, until they did something. They acted. He said, go show yourself. They could have said, look at us. They don't need to go show ourselves to the priest. He'll reject us. Look, we're just like we came. But see, as an act of faith, go show yourself to the priest. I don't know how far they walked. I don't know if they got 10 steps. I don't know if they got 100 yards. I don't know if it was a quarter of a mile. I don't know how far it was that they had to travel. I don't know if it was a mile, but as they went, as they acted on the word of God, they were healed. As they went, they were healed. Paul told them, uh, Peter told the man at Lystra, he said, stand up, Paul did, stand up right on your feet. And he's crippled. How can he stand? How are you going to stand up if you're crippled? And yet he said, stand up right on your feet. You know what he did? He made that effort. He acted on what he believed. And as he acted, the strength of God came into his body and he was whole. If he'd have laid there and said, well, I can't be healed. I've been like this for 38 years. I'm going to be like this the rest of my life. Can't you see I can't walk? you telling me to get up. Can't you see I can't get up? But faith is an act. And when he made that effort, boom, the power of God went into operation and he was healed. So act like you're healed. Talk like you're healed. See, speaking is a part of acting. You got to speak your healing. You can't go around and say, you know, I, I feel so sick, I can't hardly hold my head up. And you may actually feel that way in the natural. But I'm talking about you've got to act on what God said. God says you're healed. And as you begin to act that out in your life, it will be a manifestation. I've been sick and I've been well. Well is better. How many of you believe well is better? And we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And we are to, we are to represent him in this world. Now think about this. If we say we are of Christ, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, if we be Abraham's seeds and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ and we're the light of the world, if we go around to represent Christ, but we're down in the mouth just like the world, if we're just as whipped and defeated as the world is, and we're acting that and portraying that, what makes you think that anybody wants what you got? Excuse me, I better preach to this crowd up here. Maybe I can see my shadow. I said, thank you for the amen. Are you listening to me, shadow? But one thing I know about a shadow, in God there is no shadow of turning. You know, my shadow will move with me. But in God, there is no shadow of turning. In other words, if God said it, he'll do it. He will do exactly what he said. You can count on God. He's a man that cannot lie. He said, I am a man that cannot lie. Let God be true and every man a liar. And we're to represent Christ. And we're to show the world the love of God. That's the, that's the main thing we need to do is show people the love of God. They need to see the love of Christ in us. You can't go around mad at everybody in the world acting blowed up like a toe frog all the time. I see folks come to service sometimes to sit there and jaw like this. I want to go up and say, I know probably they got a lot on their mind Probably they're dealing with stuff I don't even know anything about. And everybody, and, and people got this. They say, you know what? It, 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 you don't understand, Brother Ken. You're a preacher. 
as if preachers are exempt. I face the same things you do. I tell you, when I go up to get gasoline and it's going up, 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 up in prices or whatever, you know, I don't drive over to one pump and it says preacher pump. In other words, I get a big discount. That's something I don't do. I don't tell nobody that I'm a preacher to get a 10% discount. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Because I want the world to know if anybody can pay their way, it's a Christian. Now, I'm not against getting bargains and deals. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm not just going to do it to try to just convince and tell somebody something to get a big di- or get a little discount. Right? I, I didn't have to tell anybody. I went in Dunkin' Donut one day, and I'm going to quit with this, but I went in Dunkin' Donut one day, at, I believe it was at Wilson, and I walked up to the counter. I said, give me a cup of coffee, whatever I asked him for. Anyway, let's say, I don't remember the exact figure, but I'll just throw out something that says, oh, that'll be $2.35. So I'll get $2.35 out. Then they look up at me and said, oh, excuse me, it's only one ninety nine. I don't think somebody got it. It's only one ninety. I didn't have to tell anybody. <laughs> they saw it for the sale. But you know what? I didn't say, oh, no, I'm not going to take the discount. I went on and enjoyed it. But, you know, I'm not going to try to do anything to manipulate to give somebody to give me a discount. Now, if you're in a business deal, dealing with business, that's a different things. You know, you're building or anything else, you want to get the best price for your money, right? So I, all those things being equal. But I'm talking about just to try to get a little bit here and a little bit there. No, no, no. I, my God supplies all my needs. And I don't, look, Look, I don't want gas to go up no more than you do. But if gas goes up to $5 a gallon, what difference does it make as long as God gives you $5 to buy that gallon of gas? You got it, right? So we're to represent God in this earth. And we ought to represent him in style. We ought to represent him in total victory. Come on, stand to your feet right now. Let's lift our hands and praise God. We are victorious. Woo! The word, the word, the word. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a healing word too. Uh, what time is it, Michael? I see, I see, I see. Somebody, who's been having trouble with their neck? Anybody been having trouble with their neck? All right, stretch your hand toward her. Put your hand on your neck, glory. In the name of Jesus, that pain, that stiffness, whatever it is in her neck that's causing a problem, I ask your healing power right now to go into her and loose that neck and make her free from that in Jesus' name. Now just go ahead and act on it. Move that neck. Do what you maybe couldn't do before. Just go ahead and move it. Turn it around. Say, I'm healed. Glory to God. Shoulder, somebody got a shoulder problem in your shoulder. Anybody? I want to pray for you if you do. Lorraine, about that. Hold your hand up. Just turn around. Point at her. Y'all go ahead and pray. Go ahead and speak the word over. We speak healing into that shoulder. In the name of Jesus, healing and deliverance. <laughs> Just go ahead and act on it. Move that arm. Praise God. That's right. Just go ahead and move it around. Say, devil, you're a liar. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Stomach problems. Somebody been having some problems in the stomach in some way? Anybody? Anybody? Anyway? Opportunity. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isn't God good? 
just lift our hands one more time and thank him for the word that's functioning and operating in our life. Hallelujah. The word of God. I want to challenge you this week. It's midweek, but it's not many chapters. But can I challenge you to do something that I believe every person in this room can do? And it won't take but just a little bit every day. You can do more, but I want you to do this. How many of you will read the book of Ephesians this week? I think there's six chapters. And it might take 15 minutes, 20 minutes to read the whole six chapters. So if you divided it up, it wouldn't be that much every day. You say, why did you pick the book of Ephesians? Because in my opinion, the book of Ephesians tells us about who we really are in Christ and what we have and what we can what we can demonstrate and how to put it in effect and how to live this life of victory in Christ Jesus. To me, Ephesians, I said to me, everybody got their favorite book, you know. But to me, my favorite book, because it really tells me who I am in Christ, is the book of Ephesians. I want you to read it and act on it this week, and I'm here to tell you, it will revolutionize your life. You can read it more, more than one time if you want to, but it, read it at least one time, okay? All right, we'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the word.